Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Corral, the next game from Fun Tales. This is a game that's going to be on Kickstarter shortly. There'll be a link to that in the description down below. But Corral is a game about building pyramids. This is a game where you're going to want to get the most points. And how you get points is going to be, like I said already, primarily through building pyramids, although through a variety of other things as well. So for instance, making offerings when you have the great ceremony at the end of every round. And that's the base game. We'll talk about the various modules that can be added in as well. Timestamps down below to all sections of this review, but those modules are important and will totally mix up the ways you get points. But for a second, let's focus on the base game experience. We'll talk about the module shortly. The base game experience, like I said already, build pyramids, get points, uh, make make various offerings to the in the grand ceremony, get points. That's the primary way you get points in this game. The turn structure in the game is going to be that you're going to take one of your people, you're going to take your leader or whatever it is, and move it around the board, moving it up to the distance, depending on how far you can actually move. So for instance, let's go ahead and go one, two, three, let's go ahead and move three. You're going to move these action spaces around the board, these action spaces that spiral inwards towards the Great Pyramid, where we'll have a ceremony once somebody gets there. I'm going to go here, I'm going to draw two cards because I went to the card space action. So I'm going to also go one, two, and they'll perhaps go ahead and add one stone, because they add one stone per person here, to their cart. So they're going to have their own cart. Let's go ahead and pretend this is their cart. That's my cart over there. We're going to put a cart over here, put that there. Awesome. Then we're going to have the red person go. They're just going to go one and they're going to add a person somewhere on the board. They're actually going to start their own. They're going to lock in their own building site already. They're going to put a person down here and lock in a potential building site where you can build pyramids. Then you're going to go ahead and start the new round. Each round starts with you rolling the dice and you moving the architect that many spaces, one or two spaces. The grand architect's going to move one or two, depending on the first player, whoever rolls the die makes that choice. So we're gonna say one, two. They move two spots over there. Now this is going to be important because you can only ever take actions before, after the great architect on the trail. And something I didn't talk about is you can also go backwards. So for example, when we're back to blue now, blue can choose to move backwards a spot. You can always move up to your speed, which starts at four, but you can move backwards as well. So blue's going to go ahead and move back, grabbing a stone and adding it to their cart because it's on or after the great architect. So this architect's going to try to drive just how fast the turn moves, or more specifically, the players can drive how, fa how, how long a round lasts although the architect will kind of overrule the players if they are trying to drag it out as long as they can. We're going to go back to yellow. Yellow's going to go ahead and move over here, grabbing an alpaca, adding it to their own player board. Then red's going to go ahead and go one, two, drawing two cards. That's going to be red's turn over there. Going around and around, we roll the die again. The die moves, architect moves two. Any actions before the architect and are now off limits again. So you're going to be going round and around doing that. And the action spaces, just to give you clarity, are going to be this action space, which is one, two, three, the same action space each time you circle around, is going to be adding new new, new figures to your board, new workers, which can either go to your quarry, they can alternatively go to lock in various spots over here, so you can get more quarry, more stone. You can lock in building sites where you can actually start getting, you know, actually start building your pyramids. And then once you actually have a pyramid on the board, let's say we've actually built this pyramid over here, you can also add another one of these to become a priest on the pyramid, scoring you points every single round. I just push that in instead of actually putting this in. Let's go ahead and do that there. Also prototype to all these things, but go, go awesome. Now we have a priest who's going to earn us a point every single round. That's going to be this action spot. This action spot is adding more stone to your lift. This, this action spot is going to be driving, drawing more cards in the game. The cards that can give you various bonus actions, such as moving further, repeating the spot, the bonus spot, building your pyramids faster, this action spot is going to grant you alpacas, which helps you move faster, because initially moving, moving four, is very easy early on. The problem is every time you start a pyramid, as soon as you start a pyramid, let's go ahead and put that over there, as soon as you start a pyramid, that adds to the pathway. Now when you're counting, you go one, two, three, four. Whether or not you can stop there doesn't matter. Adding a pyramid slows down the trail, which can slow down the game, which means you need to be, you need to be on top of your alpacas to ensure that you're adding more so you can actually move around the board. Otherwise, the Grand Architect is going to be moving faster than you because the Grand Architect always skips those pyramids. Go around and around and around until eventually someone wanders in to the center zone. Let's assume we actually be able to get there, at which point you trigger a Grand Ceremony. And when you do that, the players are going to go ahead and give in cards to try to sacrifice to the Grand Ceremony. The player who discards the most cards will get a variable number of points depending on how large the Central Pyramid has been built, and other players will either gain or lose points, and that is primarily the game. Rinse, go round and round the track, repeat that for either seven rounds, or once seven pyramids are built, and that is going to be a game of corral. You're going to score points for your final pyramids, and then whoever wins, wins the game. That's the core game. Once again, 
Move your architect around the track, either forward or backwards, ensuring you take an action that is on or after the grand architect. Then keep going around the board until you trigger a ceremony. Cash in cards for the ceremony to get points. Those cards can be utilized for extra actions or for the ceremony. And then add up points in the game. You get 10 points for every level 5 pyramid. Although when you start a pyramid, you can also choose to start it as a level 3 pyramid, which will only give you 5 points but might drive endgame a little faster. Also, you may not have time to build a level 5 pyramid. You may realize that this is the best you can get. Do that for 7 rounds or until 7 pyramids are done. And that is a game of Corral before the modules. The modules are going to mix everything up. You see, let's first of all, by the way, let's go ahead and just add this over here. Because every, every few pyramids on this track over here, whenever you hit 1, 2, 3, 4, whenever you build a pyramid, you're going to start adding these over here. So you have a larger central pyramid, which is going to give you more points for the grand ceremony. But let's start talking about the various modules in this game, because there are a lot. So first of all, there's going to be the snake module. And first of all, it's relative. I'm just going red in order. The snake module is going to slightly change this, that starting in the second round, the snake can block a spot on the board where players can sacrifice an alpaca or sacrifice some cards and potentially points to take that action, otherwise it blocks them. Not always impactful, but can be impactful, especially depending on the player state. If you have a full sleigh full of stone, you don't need more stone, blocking off a quarry where everyone has architects, that can be a huge factor in delaying their game and slowing them down because that snake can really get in the way. So sometimes impactful, sometimes not so much. We're going to have these cards over here. These cards are going to be cards that you're going to, every single round, you're going to draw one. So you're going to look at one each of the seven rounds. And those cards are going to give you something else to be mindful of when it comes to the sacrifice. Let's just read this one over here. This one says, in a three-player game, if the players don't collectively discard at least seven cards in the grand ceremony, then the person who just, the people who discarded, the people who didn't discard the most cards are going to lose an alpaca. In other words, if I discard three cards, you discard one, one, that's a total of five. I'm safe, but the two of you are losing an alpaca. So it adds an additional incentive and juggling of discarding cards for the grand ceremony to both get points and to avoid negative consequences. That's another module. We're going to have this module over here. Where at the beginning of the game, you're going to shuffle these up and lay out five cards, which are going to give you different scoring objectives to go for. Again, just another module to be mindful of. These are going to give you different things that you can do that will give you points as soon as the first player achieves them. So now you have no another thing to be mindful of. Do you want to complete three pyramids? Do you want to complete two pyramids, two pyramids next to each other? Do you want to place two priests on five on, on a five-level pyramid? Do you want to achieve seven movement points? A whole bunch of different options on the board, different things to be mindful of as you try to figure out which particular puzzle you're going for. Then we have these over here. These are going to be more tiles that are going to give you a way that you get points every single round and a way that determines first player every round. So for example, in this one, whoever is furthest ahead of the track when the round ends, which is usually going to be the person who triggers the grand ceremony, is going to get three points. The players who are furthest behind will become start player. And you're going to go through all of those for a variety of different these, triggering across the seven rounds of the game, giving you a different thing to be mindful of as you go through the game. Then, la not lastly yet, or are we up to lastly? No, almost lastly, two more modules to go. We have these over here, which are going to be special action tiles. Special action tiles are going to go over here, where you're going to start the game with these, and then when the number of pyramids are built, you're going to slightly modify the various actions on the board. So for example, let's say when you go ahead and you put this on the board, when you build that over there, you're going to add this to one of these spots that have these things, a card spot over here, where you can discard two cards to draw four. So now instead of drawing two cards, you slightly modify that board state to be somewhere where you discard two and draw four. When you build the first, third, and fifth pyramids of the game, you're going to be modifying action spots on the board, again, giving you slightly different puzzle to juggle. And then lastly, we're going to have the emissary track. The emissary track is going to give you somewhere else where you can put your people and your alpacas. Whenever you take your people or alpacas, you can add them to one of your tracks. You look at your player color. So the only thing you care about here is going to be the rewards and then your player color. When every time you add an alpaca and one of your people, you get the corresponding reward. And more importantly, or just as importantly, whoever is highest on that track, whoever has accomplished the most uh, emissaries in the game, is going to get a four-point bonus. Think of this as the longest road kind of mechanic, where a person goes here, they get the four-point bonus. If somebody else gets to the second level before they do, they get the four-point bonus. Going back and forth for earning both the bonuses on the sideboard, as well as competing for these four points, which can matter extensively because this is a game that can range in the 50 to 60 point genre, and not genre, in the 50 to 60 point range. And so you're going to be fighting desperately over any number of points. Build pyramids, you get points. Uh, you actually end game building pyramids, get points. Getting priests on pyramids, you get points every round. And putting out emissaries, you can get eight points on the board, plus another bonus four points. Accomplishing these objectives, you can get three points, four points, two points, and a variety of these. Being first in any of these categories, having the most alpacas in round two, boom, another three points. 
there are a ton of different points to juggle in this game, which brings us to the review part of this video where I talk about what I like, didn't like, and can see others not liking in Corral. And to begin with, the playtime for this game matches the experience. And what I mean by that, that, what I mean by that is even, let's just give an example of the most recent game I had, which is going to be a three player game with every single module all packed together. Still took only an hour and 10 minutes to play the game. And the base game on its own, without any modules, is going to be closer to the 45 minute range. This is a game that offers you a simple, fast puzzle that takes between 45 to an hour and 15, depending on the player count, depending if you play the game, depending on the modules you've included in the game. And it gives you a fairly rewarding, tightly packed punch for that experience. And the modules are going to be the second thing because the modules are key to me. I'll talk about this more in my final thoughts, but base Corral for me was a I'm happy I played it and ready to move on to the next game kind of experience. I'm happy that they have this structure in place. I think the base Corral is going to be very accessible as a gateway game to many people in terms of giving you a simple streamlined experience. But the point juggling in base corral is not extensive. The strategies you're trying to manage don't come to anything other than building pyramids and giving in cards for the final ceremony. And there's not enough variability in that engine to really give you a, a reason to die back in time and time again if you're someone who has played a bunch of games, as I generally well have. And so that, and I appreciate the modules because the modules very much muddy that experience in a good way. They muddy the clarity of how to get points in Corral. They muddy the, 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 the precision of just, okay, I just build pyramids. Okay, I just grab cards. Now it's about a whole bunch of different things. Which objectives am I going to go for? Which point scoring cards am I going to go for? Do I go up the emissary track? Do I fight you there? Or did you already get to the third level? And now I'm definitely not getting those four points. And so the rest of the points may not be worth it. Instead, why don't I focus on being first in all of these across the rounds? Because that could be an extra 12, 15, 20 points in the game if I do it right. Or perhaps I focus more on the pyramids or a bit of a hybrid model. There's a lot more to take in, a lot more to manage when you play with all of the modules. And for the most part, I would play with all of the modules. They, the snake is probably the one that I'm most on the fence about because sometimes it matters, other times it doesn't. I don't know if it matters enough to me for me to care. But most of these modules will give you some degree of something else to consider as you play through them. And so it muddies the water of this game in a good way. They make the strategies less, less, less clear. They make the pathways towards victory less clear. And then the tension. Another thing I like in this game is the tension of ending the round. This is something that's going to be a problem for others. We'll talk about this later. But the tension of ending the round is a huge thing in this game. And that's also going to be impacted by these various cards, by these various objectives. But in Corral, you're going to be moving around, moving back and forth, back and forth, going forward, going back, trying to juggle the various action spots of the game so you can slowly gather stone, you can build up your pyramids, you can gather more cards, you can make your sleigh faster, all these different things you're trying to do. But then you're slowly going to be moving towards the end because at any given point, you know full well that the person who triggers the grand ceremony has a little bit of an edge they break ties and they control which resources can be played because there's different cards, four different resources, and whoever plays the first one, if I play fish, no one else can play fish in the grand ceremony to give me a little bit of degree of locking other players out. So being first can be another way of getting points in the grand ceremony. Being first can deny others the plans they are working towards, and so you will have players who realize they're within four or within their slay's distance of the grand ceremony and go ahead and trigger that. And that can add a lot of tension to the game. Do you try to go back and forth to do it, get as much done as possible? Or do you try to say, nope, I'm going to try to try to trigger the end game state or the end round state. And again, those different factors in the game, knowing if you're furthest ahead in the alpaca track, that can matter. If you have the most alpacas, then you have now have an additional incentive to just trigger the end of the round. Sure, you'll get less done, but so will everyone else. But you're going to get three points for the most alpacas in round two. So that tension of triggering the end of the round while trying to balance how much you get done both manages the game time and ensures that Corral does stay in a manageable reach instead of dragging on across seven non-ending forever rounds, but it manages the game time and adds a degree of tension and strategy to the experience. As far as things I didn't like in the game, some modules, which we touched upon briefly, aren't impactful enough, or I'd love to see tweaked or adjusted in some way. There's a lot of variability here, but some of it to me matters more than others. And I'm going to very quickly rattle through all the modules and my own opinion and experience with each one. To begin with, we have these on the left side. I like these as is. They give you a reason to drive towards something every single round. I'm a fan of them. We have the action, extra action spots. I, I like the extra action spots. That kind of impacts everyone, so you're kind of just adding an extra thing on the board, but it adds another small puzzle to be mindful of 
of, and it gives people a reason to stop off in one place or another. I'm fine with it as is. This bot over here, these extra cards, I wish the consequences were potentially a little bit more damaging. More often than not, especially because the, con the consequences are often shared, more often than not, we kind of ignored the consequences because it wasn't worth trying to force ourselves to discard an extra four cards to avoid it. And so they didn't have as much of that tension that I would like these cards to provide. I want the consequence to matter enough that I kind of have to give more cards up. I have to consider it at the very least, maybe losing some points, maybe losing two alpacas. So I'd like a little more tension in those. The emissary board, I love the concept of the emissary board. I want the rewards to potentially impact the rest of the board more. The rewards are fine. Giving you those eight points plus a few card draws and some stones and fighting for those four points, that's great. But it doesn't interact with the main board, so I felt a little disconnected. I like the concept of it. I'd love to see some different rewards that more interact with the engine. And then these cards over here are going to be ones that I love the premise of these cards. One concern we had based on our plays is that some of these cards, most of these cards, tend to get snatched up in the first two rounds of the game. That's not always true. Something like, you know, placing two priests on level 5 pyramids. It's hard to get level 5 pyramids. You're going to have to wait and see how it plays out. But for the most part, with the, except with a few exceptions, most of the cards in this game were gone by round two, meaning they added a lot to the first two rounds of the game. They added a lot of what am I going to go for, how am I going to pursue my path, and they drove the game forward in the beginning of the game. And then by the time you hit round three, they were no longer a part of the experience, again, for the most part. I'd love to see potentially some modification, perhaps instead of, you know, having five cards at the beginning of the game, maybe you have two cards every round that could potentially give you more of a reason for these to matter, not just the beginning, but the entire time. And by the way, these are probably my favorite addition in terms of the, the addition of the modules to the game of giving you a puzzle to manage. Similar to the, these cards over here, they give you something to be mindful of every single round that matters extensively, again, except these were kind of gone the first two rounds. And then lastly, like I talked about already, the snake was my least impactful of the modules. It mattered here and there, but for the most part, it didn't have a significant enough impact on the game state for me to think of it as being that impactful. But overall, some of the modules are, so I guess going back to what I didn't like section, some of the modules I would like to see tweaked or adjusted or better or more impactful, more interweaving in the game. But overall, the addition of the modules I liked a lot. I would have liked temple placement to matter more. You have tons of spots on the board where you place temples, and it matters a little bit because of the fact that it can add to the length of the track. Adding, you know, three temples in a row over here can specifically shift up the board, and in fact, ironically, going back to the snake, if you then throw the snake there th down there as well, you've added even less of a breaking point, so it can have an impact. But past extending the track, the placement of the temples did of the pyramids didn't matter as much as I would have liked. It would have been nice to have a reason to place temples in any given spot as opposed to just anywhere across this giant board. And again, it does matter. It matters if it's before or after a certain query. It matters because it extends the track. But it didn't feel as it mattered. I would have liked it to matter more. It does matter. I would have liked it to matter more. And then finally, and this is more of a graphical nitpick, but especially because of the way temples are added to the board, it gets progressively harder and harder to see what the track length is at any given point. As soon as you have a bunch of temples, like right now, we have three temples over there. So granted, I know from here to, if I'm moving over here, I can go one, two, three, four, no problem. But as you start to spiral around the pyramids, because the pyramids add to the length, it very often becomes, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're slowly adding, you're slowly counting more and more for each pyramid in a way that slows down the game and at least in our games almost always had someone making a mistake at some point it is not immediately clear which side the pyramid even impacts does this pyramid impact this side or this side when i'm looking at it it's easy to tell but when i'm trying to figure out how many spaces i'm counting i'm just going around and around unless you're being precise and measured in your counting every single time it is a slight nitpick that has caused minor issues not gameplay breaking issues but minor issues where someone's like oh i guess i have to discard an extra card to move one further because i miscounted as far as what I can see others not liking, there's only one thing, but it's a big thing to be very mindful of. I talked about how I like the tension of driving towards the end of the round every single round, of driving towards a, a situation which works for you. Do I want to keep going and building, or is now a good time for me to end the round, and I see you have a full card of stone and you're one spot away from using it on a pyramid? So there's a lot of strategy in that. But it also might not be satisfying for you. It can be frustrating to have a strategy and then watch other players try to drive endgame. It can be frustrating to want to sit down for a two hour long game of Corral where you're going to build things up as much as possible, where you're going to have as much fun as possible, and then have aggressive players try to rush endgame in this game, try to push towards the end, and maybe you don't even get to finish seven pyramids. Maybe the game ends up to seven rounds instead because people were aggressively pursuing that type of strategy. So that's something that's definitely worth being mindful of. While I happen to like it, 
while I appreciate the strategy and tension it adds to this game, it is something that might take away from your experience playing Corel. Which brings us to final thoughts for Corel. And I hope I'm saying this name correctly. I'm realizing now at the end of the review that maybe it's maybe I'm saying it incorrectly. I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. But for Corel, Corel as a base game is an experience I was happy to experience once. Like I said already, it's a game that I was happy to play it, but not an experience I would be looking to dive into more than once, or maybe more than twice. It's not a bad experience, it just didn't give me that much variability in the puzzle it was presenting. Versus with the modules, it gives you a lot more reasons to dive back in. It gives you a lot more variability in the scoring. It gives you a lot more variability in the strategy, at least as far as the modules that I particularly like. Like I said already, I like them to varying degrees. I kind of want most of them, but I, I they all do different things in different ways and force me to try to rethink how I want to approach the game, either round by round, or at the beginning of the game, or the entire strategy of whether I'm going for emissaries. Emissaries can give you 12 points in the game. That can be the difference between winning and losing, but you might have to fight for it. Those are all going to give you different things. Uh, the, the experience of Corral was great, is, not was, is greatly enhanced by the addition of the modules they're providing. This is an experience, this is a, a, a thing that, that, that Fun Tales has done before. They've done it with Glenmore as well. Having a Glenmore, they, they, they put out Glenmore, and then they have all these modules you can add in to mix up and modify the experience, and I'm happy they've done that here as well. As far as a rating for this one, this is a, still a 3 out of 5 for me, even with the modules. My rating system is down below. A 3 is a solid game. It is a higher 3. It's one that comes close to being a 4. At the end of the day, I kind of want the modules to be cleaned up a little bit more. Not cleaned up's the wrong word. I want the modules a different way for myself that has me looking at some of them and thinking, I, I want to see where it ends up. And again, this is a good time to note, this is a prototype. Everything you see here is a prototype from components to the rules. Anything and everything is subject to change. Overall, I really enjoyed my experience with the crawl. I do recommend it very much with the modules, although if you're playing it with family or gateway, then the fact that you can introduce them one at a time or even not at all is a good thing to be aware of. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.